Okay, so we've just completed our May 10th transaction. Time to move on to the next one. May 11th, the company bought a new computer diagnostic tool which cost $10,000. The company bought the asset on account. Okay, there's that magic word again. We bought something on account. That means we bought something but we didn't pay for it. So the question, is cash involved? Well, no, if I bought something and I didn't pay for it, then there's no cash. But let's work through it. The company bought a new computer diagnostic tool. So we got a new computer tool. Uh, uh, that's an asset. That's something we own and control. It's good for our company. I'm going to assume it's a long-term asset. Uh, so it's an asset. It's going up. We're going to debit that asset. So let's debit this computer diagnostic tool. I'm just going to call it a computer tool. And we're going to debit it for the amount we paid, $10,000. Well, the amount we didn't pay, but the amount it's worth, $10,000. Now, normally, again, we buy something, we credit cash if we pay cash. In this case, we bought the asset on account. That account payable is coming up again here. We have a liability. We owe these guys money. We owe them $10,000. It's a liability going up. I didn't owe them anything on May 10th. I owe them grand on May 11th. That liability is increasing. So I'm going to credit my favorite credit, accounts payable. I credit that for $10,000. I'm going to put a date on this. And again, my description would be purchase the computer diagnostic tool on account. I mean, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's move on. May 14th, the company earned revenue of $7,500. The money was not yet received. So, in answer to the question I'm always asking, did money change hands? The answer is no. There's no cash involved here. Um, well, I, I can deal with the first part of this pretty easily. We earned revenue. Revenues always take a credit, so we're going to credit revenue. And we established that Kurjeet's computer does repair, so we're going to credit repair revenue for uh, $7,500. I've left room for a debit. So if I do a bunch of work and I don't get paid, but I'm owed money, that situation is called an account receivable. It's kind of the opposite of a payable. Somebody came to us, we did a bunch of work for them, and they said, hey, send me the bill. They owe us money. That's an asset called an account receivable. It's a current asset. So we're going to debit a slash R for accounts receivable, and the amount of that receivable is $7,500. The date here is May the 14th, and the description again is earn $7,500 on account, or earn $7,500 didn't receive the money, something like that. Let's carry on. May 21st, the company paid salaries of $6,000. Is cash involved here? Yes. Right? Always ask yourself that question because it makes the journal entry easy. Is cash involved? Yes. Is cash going up? No. Cash is going down. Cash is an asset. We got an asset going down. Let's credit cash. Again, I'll leave room for the debt. Credit cash, $6,000. Our debit here is, well, what, what do you think salaries are to a company? Are they an asset? No way. A liability? Well, we can owe salaries, but that's not what this is. Shareholders equity? Nope. Revenue, expense, or dividend, salaries are an expense of a company. They're a cost of doing business. If you want to have a company that has employees, you've got to pay their wages. Wages and salaries are expenses. So we're going to debit salaries expense for $6,000. Our date is May the 21st. Um, just a quick comment here. Uh, a lot of people get expenses and liabilities mixed together, and they do often go hand in hand. And as you practice more journal entries, you'll get a feel for when we're paying off a liability and when we're paying an expense. In this case, we're considering salaries to be an expense. Let's move on to the next. May the 24th, paid cash of 128 grand to acquire a building. Oh, okay, so I remember a few journal entries ago, we borrowed a bunch of money, we said we we're going to buy a building with it, well now we've bought that build. So we bought a building for cash. Uh, was cash involved? Yes. What's cash doing, going up or down? Well, we paid cash, so it's going down. Uh, it's an asset, cash is like the main asset, it's going down, let's credit cash. For $128,000, that's quite a bit of dough. Uh, debit, well, what did we buy? We bought a building. A building is an asset. 
it's an asset that's going up now we have more buildings today than we had yesterday let's debit building for a hundred twenty eight thousand dollars barely have room to date this it's May the 24th and again the description would be purchase the building for cash let's carry on May the 25th the company paid for the equipment it purchased on May 3rd I'm gonna scroll all the way up in this problem and find May 3rd oh there it was May 3rd we bought two thousand dollars of equipment on account so we said give us the equipment we'll pay you later well now in the entry we're looking at we're paying them so how much are we paying them two thousand dollars is cash involved yes cash is going down so when we pay off this bill we're going to credit our cash because cash is going down by two thousand so let's let's go down there and credit our cash let's see um there we are so I'm gonna credit cash because I paid my debt of two thousand dollars now the debit here is a little bit tricky and students often get this one confused or they get it wrong uh, what we have gotta say here is we didn't buy any more equipment I'm not gonna debit equipment I've already got two thousand dollars worth of equipment on the books but look back at your May 3rd entry we already debited equipment so I don't want to do that twice we paid off our equipment purchase what we did was we paid off our debt here we said we owe these guys two thousand dollars we don't owe them two thousand dollars anymore our liability needs to go down the amount we owe them remember liability is what we owe the amount we owe them just went down by two thousand dollars so I've got to reduce my liability by two thousand dollars our liability again maybe flipping back to May 3rd our liability was called accounts payable we said we owe them two thousand dollars in accounts payable I'm going to make that liability go down Oop, by debiting it I'm going to debit my accounts payable to reduce the amount I owe them debit accounts payable two thousand bucks and the date here is May 3rd uh, again my description would be paid off the equipment purchase of May 3rd just saying what it says here in different words okay let's move on to the next one May 26th the company received the service revenue that it earned on May 14th okay this is another one that's referencing something uh, the company received the service revenue that it earned on May 14th let's go up to May 14th May 14th there it is oh right we did revenue um, of $7,500 but we didn't get the money so now it's saying hey we got the money all right so how much money did we get we got $7,500 our cash is going up by the $7,500 we received so let's debit cash for 7500 bucks so again we earn we receive that money that we had already recorded as being earned I'm gonna debit cash to say I got the money seven thousand five hundred dollars so I I want to erase that little bit I'll just put an X there seventy seven thousand five hundred dollars okay so we got cash of seven thousand five hundred dollars um but what's the other piece of this puzzle what's what's the credit here uh, well let's look back to that transaction uh, so the company earned revenue of seventy five hundred dollars it wasn't receiving we had debit AR seventy five hundred dollars credit repair revenue seventy five hundred dollars so I'm certainly not going to credit repair revenue again that would be double counting that would be re recording repair revenue twice what I need to say is when I set it up here on May 14th as I said you owe me that's what account receivable means we said we you owe me seventy five hundred dollars well we've got to answer the question do they still owe us seventy five hundred dollars the answer is no so now we've got to say hey you don't owe me seventy five hundred dollars we've got to reduce the account receivable we said the account receivable was an asset when we set it up we debited it well now we're we're getting rid of it I'm gonna credit my account receivable so let's go down here we went debit cash 7500 we're gonna credit accounts receivable 7500 sorry about the X there uh, the date here is May 26 so we said you gave us 7500 debit cash 7500 you don't owe us any more money credit 7500 accounts receivable uh, my description would be receive payment on May 14th transaction something like that 
Okay, let's carry on. May 28th, the company spent 3000 bucks on advertising. Okay, so first, is cash involved? The answer is yes. Cash is an asset. It's going down here. Let's credit cash for uh, $3,000. Our debit is to say, well, what is advertising, right? The company spent three grand on advertising. Advertising is a cost of doing business. It's an expense of this company. Let's debit advertising expense for 3000 More advanced students might say, well, it could be prepaid, stuff like that. And it could be, but in sort of beginning accounting, we don't, uh, I'm not going to worry about the prepaid element that this could incur or could entail. So it's May 28th. We had a cost of doing business. That's advertising, uh, debit advertising expense, credit cash for $3,000. There's our May 28th entry. Um, oh, look at that. We're at the end of the question. We've recorded all of our journal entries here. Uh, you know, it's been a, quite a lot of them. But as I said, to learn this stuff, you've really got to be doing it on your own. If your instructor is giving you a handout or a worksheet, you should work through it and, and try not to have the solution with you. Try to work through it on your own. Work through your textbook problems on your own, and I may even post a couple extra problems on here that you could work through on your own. This stuff is best learned not by copying off of me or following off of your instructor. It's learned by doing it on your own. So that's it for this video on journal entries. I hope you've got the basics of journal entries. In our next series of videos, we're going to talk about adjusting journal entries. They're more complex, they're trickier, they're more challenging, but I think they'll be good ones and I think the videos will be useful for, to you. Alright, that's it for today.